Hi folks, Dave Lewis in here at facethewind.com. I get a lot of questions about how I built my original tornado simulation chamber. Um, and I figured I'd tear this one apart and kind of show you how this one's put together so that you have a shot of building one yourself. So in terms of overall dimensions, the base here is 14 inches by 14 inches by about 2 inches tall. And the overall chamber height is about 2 feet. Uh, but that's not all that important. Uh, you can actually make it taller, a little bit shorter. Uh, it'll it'll usually work no matter what. Now, in terms of how it generally works, well, this base here is actually a hollow square. Uh, inside is just an empty space. We've got two fans here that blow air into this space and pressurize it. Uh, these pipes here are three quarter inch PVC, and they are open to that base below. So basically, when air comes in through the fans into the base the air is forced up through these tubes which are capped at the top and along the side we've got these holes here that allow the air to shoot out sideways and that creates the shear that needs to spin the air around inside on the top we've got a plywood board and on the top of that is a uh, standard three inch muffin fan uh, that's basically providing the updraft and that will concentrate this rotation into a vortex and also along the side here I've got a light this is a LED rope light just for uh, to make the vortex visible. Now even though you can't see it, there's actually a vortex in there right now. There's only one way to see it, and that's by injecting some sort of particles in there for to act as tracers. And for that I'm using a uh, industrial uh, stage fogger here basically. And uh, you can also use things like dry ice smoke, or you can use uh, ultrasonic humidifier. Whatever produces a visible non-toxic mist that will act as a tracer and allow you to see the vortex. So here's what happens when I inject a little bit of smoke. So you can see the vortex quite easily. So you can see in the bottom of the base here, I've got a, a hole cut with a tube in it. Uh, this is what's going to feed the smoke into the chamber. Now, depending on what you're using to generate and feed your smoke, it may come out very, very fast, like this does here. So if it's coming out really fast, the vortex that it creates will be really messy and hard to see. So what I usually do is I put some sort of block or a light piece of foam core to kind of spread out the fog. And it makes the vortex a little more visible. Okay, let's talk components. What I used for fans in the base, these are just two CPU fans. They're powered by 12 volts DC. They draw very little current, and they blow more than enough air. Believe it or not, actually, I think I could probably get away with just using one, but I prefer to have two just to have a little bit extra power if I need it. So for the main updraft fan, which sits on top of the chamber, uh, this is what I use. This is a standard three inch muffin fan it's 12 volt DC and it's basically the same kind of fan that's used to cool computer cases in fact that's, uh, that's actually where this one came from if you're building a larger chamber you're going to need to be able to move some more air um, and this one's a little larger, it's a 5 inch fan, still powered by 12 volts but it uses more power and, and blows more air and if you're building an even larger chamber you might consider another one type of fan, this is an AC fan powered by 120 volts and it moves even more air still to light the whole thing up, I'm using a strip of LED lights. These are available in real form from Amazon. I got 15 feet for about $8. And uh, they do a very good job of lighting up the interior so you're able to see the vortex. You'll also notice that the chamber is only open on two sides. The, the rear two sides are actually covered by these foam core boards I made. Uh, the reason is twofold. Basically, these prevent any stray air currents from disrupting the vortex but they also provide a nice black backdrop so you're able to see the vortex easily. And this is what I'm using to power the whole thing. It's basically a standard 12 volt power adapter. Uh, you don't have to use this exact kind, but as long as it's 12 volts DC, it should work. Okay, so now I'll start taking it apart so you can see what's inside. So the top is basically pressed on. And the top piece uses these three-quarter inch PVC pipe anchors. They're threaded on one side 
and basically goes through a hole and then the cap tightens it down and that's it. Next the pipes come off and the top is held on with some screws. So when I go and remove the top cover here of the base, you can see inside is just a flexible tube. This is what feeds the mist or fog to the bottom of the base. And you have the frame here, which is basically made out of simple pine board. It's 14 inches wide by 14 inches deep by uh, 2 inches thick. The base plate here I just made out of some uh, high density cardboard, but you can actually make it out of plywood or whatever works for you. Okay, so the three quarter inch pipe anchors for the bottom side are pretty much the same as what we used on the top. The only difference is that uh, we need air to be able to go through these and into the pipe. So what I did was I took a threaded coupler and I basically cut it in half and I'm going to be using it as a nut to hold this anchor onto the board. And to feed the mist directly into the chamber what I'm using is a, a flexible tube I found at the dollar store, but you could use any kind of uh, flexible dryer tube. Uh, this basically just feeds the mist all the way up to the bottom of the chamber. And I just have this glued on right here. And you can also see the twin CPU fans that I'm using to pressurize the bottom box. Again, you could probably get away with just using one. For the pipes themselves, they're basically just 3 quarter inch PVC. They have a 3 16 inch hole drilled every 4 inches along the length. However, this first hole needs to start about 1 inch from the edge. And this is because when you stick it into the pipe anchor, you want this hole to be as close to the bottom as possible. This low level shear is very important to the vortex formation. So just remember, when you are reassembling it, always make sure that the holes that in the pipes are pointing in a spiral pattern. So these holes are pointing to the right. These holes are pointing down. These holes are pointing to the left. And these holes are pointing up. So that way you create a nice spiral airflow. Also notice that I've put the, uh, the lowest hole as close to the bottom as possible. <laughs>